Yeah, already. It, you got to feel just like yesterday that we did episode one. It's been years, literally. Just been doing this forever. I'm just going to let him ramble on for a couple <laughs> seconds. Uh, what? You know, it's just, you know, it's. I'm just going to get emotional. It's been a good broadcast. You done? <laughs> are, yeah. you, are you done? Excellent. So last time, so last time we uh, we said we were going to discuss the ruination and the second video game bubble. All right. Full disclosure, I work in the game industry, and that's all you're going to get out of me about that. So Full disclosure, I like video games. <laughs> <laughs> and I have subscribed to some video game websites, so I'm, I'm a bit of an expert. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's talk about can the video game industry crumble again like it did in 1982? Stan's answer. Actually, let's go with Josh's answer. That might be more interesting. Josh, go. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to need some reasoning for that. <laughs> <coughs> I don't think... Okay, well, let me modify that. Kind of. I don't think we'll hit a 1982 level of crash uh, because of the just the amount of money that's in it and the way that it's structured compared to what it was back then. <coughs> but I do think that it will get to a point where it is in the hands of such large companies that are doing such shady things that the tension between the consumer and the corporation will get to a point where it is a very toxic and unhealthy environment and not a lot is happening. I don't say I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying it's possible. So, so I need some specifics from you. Uh, what do you mean it'll get toxic and it'll just go down? Uh, well, kind of going back to what we talked about with Mass Effect Three a little bit in in, in the publishers making decisions purely on financial basis to meet arbitrary deadlines because I think that's the only way to make money and I think you're seeing a lot more games coming out in a boilerplate fashion or with those lack of artistic um, care and, and consideration and it's just let's fart this thing out to make money and I think at a certain point we're going to hit a place where even the dumb masses of consumers are going to be like, eh, this isn't what I'm paying $60 for. Or in the case of games with lots of DLC and season passes and whatnot, you know, $120 for. And you're going to see a lot of social media backlash against these companies. The companies saying, oh, the consumers are just entitled little brats and we're, you know, we're giving them a steal at $60, $120 for the millions that we shell in. I think that's going to be a very negative environment for developers, consumers, publishers, everybody. Hmm. So you're saying it's going to come down to consumers just saying, we've had enough. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's going to, I, I think you see this in the free-to-play market too, is where... Everything is being designed to extract as much money as possible from the consumer for as little developmental input into the game to make it as Skinner box as possible just to get people getting in and clicking and doing stuff. And I mean, you know, you're seeing it in, in full-fledged games now even where you get, you know, stuff like, you know, pay... 99 cents to boost your stats on your NBA 2K15 character. Is like that a thing? Yes, it is. Oh my in gosh. In retail 2K15 game, you can pay money to boost your stats earlier than just by playing the game. Hmm. And I, I know somebody who did it, and I ridiculed them fully, but it's things like that that are leeching from the free-to-play market into the full-fledged $60 full retail games that is going to come to a head at some point. I'm not saying it's even in the next year or two, but it's going to come to a head at point, and depending on how companies react, could shape the gaming climate for the next decade or two. Uh, the game Evolve just came out recently. So that is a full $60 <laughs> game with a free-to-play model. Yes. 
Yes. Now, there, but I will say that that well, that is one of those two where there is a lot of not getting along between the developer and the publisher. You think so? It seems like that way. I mean, I will I will go ahead and say Turtle Rock clearly they are angels, but damn. Uh, Jim Sterling from the Jimquisition, I think, put it best when he said that game fell out the AAA bullshit tree and hit every branch on the way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like the season pass for that game doesn't even get you all the content in that game. That's fucked up. You, 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 when you pay 90 bucks for a video game, number one, anyone that buys a season pass, you're foolish. Let's just, let's just call it right there. You're foolish. You're basically telling the developer and the publisher, um, here's an extra 30 bucks because you promised to give me extra stuff in the future, maybe. You haven't determined what that extra stuff will be, you just said it'll be extra stuff. You have you no idea when out. it's coming out. No, I'm sorry. You see how ahead. that worked out for the people who bought Assassin's Creed Unity? <sighs> oh, let's... That dumpster fire of a game. <laughs> my, my wife has it, and uh. got it the day it came out. Bugs and all, and I just laughed. Laughed and laughed and laughed. Because it's inexcusable. There's a certain point where you're just like, no, no, you, the development history for this video game is on Wikipedia. It's not, it's not a secret to anyone. You have four years to make a solid product, and this is what you limped out with? <laughs> I paid yep. $60 for this? <laughs> inexcusable. And you know what Ubisoft did? The head developer of Ubisoft took the full brunt of it, which I don't believe they should have, and apologized, which I don't buy. I'm... Uh, you know what, when, when you release a video game, you have to QA the shit out of that video game, especially a video game for a company as big as Ubisoft. One of the largest... And a franchise such as big as Assassin's Creed. What is this one, like the eighth one in the series? What the fuck? The eighth, not like the eighth one series wise but the eighth game they've come out with yeah. something like that i don't give a damn I, I stopped caring about assassin's creed after brotherhood i'll go on the record and say that i tried revelations didn't finish it i tried part three got two hours in and stopped caring <clears throat> i've just given up on that series i just don't care anymore so my wife absolutely loves him she plays every single assassin's creed that she can get her hands on but when she got unity even she agreed that like there's a line and this crossed it. <laughs> yep. There's a fine line to where, you know, you can keep excusing the game for making it, for doing a Call of Duty and re-releasing the same thing with a new coat of paint every yep. single and that's, that's, year. That's another thing that I think is going to contribute to the potential bubble burst is if big companies keep shelling out big production titles that are just completely broken like mm -hmm. i'm sorry like battlefield 4 battlefield 4 uh destiny uh the master chief collection oh gosh the master chief collection that was that was fun to actually follow like you can't you can't keep doing that and i think it it is better to push back the release date than to always release this just broken pile of garbage mm -hmm. absolutely um, and I think I think that's going to contribute to it. so let's let's real quick you know simple simple answer what, what do you think about do you think that it is a potentiality